Well, hello, everybody. My name is Rebecca Fuller, and I'm the host and expert here at Learn Flute Online, which is the number one resource on the web for learning how to play the flute and learning it online. It's educational, inspirational, and fun. Now, today we're going to find out where to move your tongue to fix those low notes. You know which ones I'm talking about. Well, let's get started. You can do it. And Rebecca will show you how, step by step, all along the way. Introducing the, the Learn, Learn Flute, Flute Podcast. Podcast. Well, welcome back. It's a fine day at Learn Flute Online, and even a finer day to talk about something that has possibly and probably been bugging your flute tone for quite some time now. Now, today we're going to jump right into it and talk about those lowest notes on your flute. Now these lowest notes are a bother for most learning flutists because they're just hard to get out. And I think you know that I'm talking about your low C especially. Does it give you fits? Well, I know that when I was in junior high and high school especially, I had big, big troubles getting down to those lowest notes. And I was always so glad that most of my pieces never went all the way down there because I was pretty sure that if I had to play them, especially if I was going to have to play them in performance, that I wouldn't get anything out but a little puff of air. And for me, that lowest C was just so difficult. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Well, I'm guessing you do because every year I run a big tone workshop for the good subscribers at Learn Flute Online, and we spend 10 whole days diving really deep into the issues in our sound and how to fix all of the common troubles that we flute players go through. And probably in the top five or 10 asked questions at the beginning of the course is the question of how to fix the low notes on the flute. They're just problematic, it seems. Well, it's a good thing I've already been through this and back again, and I've helped hundreds and thousands get their low C out, especially and under control. Well, today in this audio episode, I'd just like to explore one of the things that you can do to make your low C not only be audible when you try to play it, but that it will actually play on time. <laughs> now you know what I mean. Sometimes we have to blow and then wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, there it is. And there's actually a few things I'd love to explore to make sure that you can get those lowest notes out gracefully and purposefully on your flute. But today in this audio, we'll just be talking about one of them. And it's probably one of the most simple fixes, and that's the position of your tongue. Yep, our lovely tongue. Now, if you can just hang with me here for a few moments and pretend you're playing your flute, you'll notice that when you tongue note after note, your tongue actually moves back and forth in your mouth. Well, what I want you to do right now is stop it somewhere in the middle of that action and analyze where it is sitting exactly. Is it kind of at the top of your mouth, like towards the roof of your mouth? Or is it hanging out in the middle? Or is it down towards the bottom of your mouth? And I'm talking about the tongue as a whole, but especially from the front tippy end and back. Where is it? Now I know you just have a very quick split nanosecond between notes, so perhaps you've not even thought about the position of your tongue between notes. Maybe it doesn't even matter, but guess what? Yep, it does matter. It matters so much, and it's the difference between good tone, bad tone, and great tone. And it makes the difference between tone and no tone on that low C. Well, really, you wonder? Yes. Now take my word for it and let's improve your playing today just by having you listen to what I'm going to instruct you to do with your tongue, especially on that low C. So try playing it your normal way. Now, does it either come out airy and whispery or does it come out an octave higher than it's supposed to? Yes. Yep. These are the issues I'm addressing today. 
Now, if we blow the note with our tongue, kind of hanging out in the middle of our mouth, or even a little high, then we get a higher C than we intended, even if we walk down like this. Oops, now do you see that last note was supposed to be a low C, not a high C. Now, assuming your flute is nice and level, nice and level, not to beat in towards your face, then this will work nicely for you. So, level that flute and play again. This time, when you reach the low C, hold it for a moment and move your tongue down so it hits the floor of your mouth, like this. Now see, the position of my tongue totally matters. Now I challenge you to try this. And if you have the airy no-show type of note down there, then just following my rules of making sure that your flute is level and not tipped in towards your face, and then dropping your tongue will probably do the job for you. Now of course there's a few more things to the recipe depending on what's going on, but this should give you a really good head start today. Well, awesome folks. I'm so glad you were here today to gather that little tidbit of knowledge from me and hopefully use it to further your own flute playing and make your musical life even just a little bit easier and more fun. Now I know that every day I studied with someone more knowledgeable than I was, was a great day because it was like opening a new little window that shed more light on what I was doing. And I love it, and I hope you do too. Please let me know you love it by leaving a comment, question, or rating, anything to let me know you're there and that you're on the journey with us. Now you know I've had the pleasure of studying with and performing with some really great flutists in my day, and it's always interesting to listen to their individual sound. It really is very similar to each person having their own vocal timbre. Now if we close our eyes and listen, like to a few people speak to us one at a time, we would easily be able to tell the difference between their voices especially if we're familiar with the people in the room. That's what timbre is. There are distinct tones inside sound that helps us distinguish the difference between them. It's kind of cool, actually, because we can't see this phenomenon, but we definitely can hear it. Well, more about this on a later episode. And as usual, let me know how it's going for you and help carry on this conversation by leaving a comment or a question here on this page. And hopefully we'll be seeing you in a lesson very, very soon. Bye now. Thanks for listening today. Remember that this is where people of all ages, such as you, can come, learn, and play the musical instrument flute in an easy to follow organized manner and in the privacy and comfort of your own home on your own schedule.